Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Pastor Matt McEwen. This week, our Torah portion is Shmini. And in this Torah portion, we learn about the tragic death of the sons of Aaron, of Nadav and Avihu. There are many theories as to why they died, and many are put forth by the rabbis. And I'm going to share with you four of them today. As it says there in chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, of the book of Vayikra, and Nadav and Avihu, the sons of Aharon, took each of them his censer, and they died before God. Now let's read what the Midrash says and what Rashi says about this particular event. Bar Kapara said in the name of Rabbi Jeremiah ben Elazar, Aaron's sons died on account of four things, for drawing near, for offering, for the strange fire, and for not having taken counsel from each other, for drawing near, because they entered into the innermost precincts of the sanctuary, for offering, because they offered a sacrifice which they had not been commanded to offer, for the strange fire, because they brought in fire from the kitchen, and for not having taken counsel from each other, as it says, each of them his censor, implying that they acted each on his own initiative, not taking counsel from one another. But obviously, we have other opinions. Rabbi Mani of Sheab, Rabbi Joshua of Sichnin, and Rabbi Yochanan, in the, in the name of Rabbi Levi, said this, the sons of Aaron died on account of four things, because they had drunk wine, as it says immediately following the incident, do not drink wine or strong drink, that you die not, Leviticus 10.9. The second is because they served in the sanctuary lacking the prescribed number of priestly garments, as is stated in Exodus 28.43. Because they entered the sanctuary without washing their hands and feet, with the reference of Exodus 30 verse 21. And because they had no children, as it says, and Nadav and Avihu died, and they had no children. In Numbers 3, 4. Abba Hanin said it was because they had no wives. This to me is the most interesting theory of all, and this is where we will park our boats, so to speak, for a moment this week. Rabbi Hanin says it's because they had no wives, for it is written regarding the high priest, and he shall make atonement for himself and for his house. This comes from Leviticus 16:6. Well, his house refers to his wife. Rabbi Levi says that they were arrogant, that many women remained unmarried, waiting for them, wanting to marry Nadav and Avihu. But what did they say? Our father's brother is a king. Our mother's brother is a prince, i.e. Nachshon, the head of the tribe of Judah. Our father is a high priest, and we are both deputy high priests. What woman is worthy of us? Moses and Aaron went first. Nadav and Avihu walked in behind them, and all Israel followed. And Nadav and Avihu were saying, When will these two old men die and we assume authority over the community? Rabbi Judah, in the name of Rabbi Abihu, says that they uttered this to one another with their mouths. And Rabbi Pinchas said that they harbored the thought in their hearts. When we think too highly of, them, of, of ourselves, as we learned a couple of Torah portions ago with the miniature Aleph, starting in the book of Vayikra, when we think too highly of ourselves, that pride can truly stand in the way of many good things. If this theory is accurate, that they thought that they were so good and so important that no woman was worthy of them, my goodness, we can get into such trouble when we think of ourselves in this way. We should not think of ourselves too highly, more highly than we ought, as the scripture says. We need to think of ourselves as lower than others. Let's remember what our master and rabbi Yeshua said, that we need to take the lowest place so that someone may say to us, come brother, come up higher, come to a place of honor, rather than us taking a place of honor and being embarrassed when we're asked to take a lower place instead. 
we need to have a kind of humility, a kind of humility that not only Moses had, but as our Messiah had. Because as he says, it is the last who will be first. And if you truly want to be great, you need to be the servant of everyone, not thinking that you're so great or that the old men that precede you need to die so that you can assume control. This is not the attitude that we need to have. What about you? Where can you use a little more humility in your life? Have you ever been tripped up by pride or wanting your own way or wanting to be in charge instead of someone else? If we don't submit ourselves to the authorities that are put over us, we're going to have a very difficult way following the authority of Hashem. Thank you for joining me once again this week. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. If you would like to study where I study and where I graduated, you can go there as well. It's called Yeshivat Shuvu. Go to shuvu.tv to fill out an application and perhaps you can study at the same place where I do. It's not only the largest Messianic Jewish yeshiva in the world, it's a beautiful community of believers that come together and help each other learn. Thank you once again for joining me this week. We'll see you next time. Shabbat Shalom.